Hey everybody. Yeah, you can hear me. You can hear me. Uh, so we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start this panel. Um, I'm Jason Work. I'll be moderating, and uh, I'm just going to have everyone introduce themselves down the line. Uh, a little bit. Uh, a little bit about your background, and uh, a little bit what you're doing uh, on the traditional side. This is a traditional tie-in, so it's both um, doing stuff on the YouTube side, which we all know and love, and then stuff in the traditional space and making those things work together. So uh, we'll start with Michael Gallagher. Hey guys, uh, morning. 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 I'm not gonna be that serious. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Gallagher. I have a YouTube channel called Totally Sketch, and I made a movie last year called Smiley. It's a horror movie, and uh, it's oh, thank you. And and it's out on uh, DVD, and uh, so that's my tie-in. <laughs> Your hair's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Your hair is fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> The, the hair, the hair section of this panel will be a little bit later. So <laughs> save, the, save the hair questions for the Q and A. Um, I'm Megan Camarena, and I'm also known as Strawberry Seventeen on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I've been vlogging since 2008, and I am currently on the Amazing Race with. Woo! Uh, I'm Joey Graceppa, I'm a YouTuber, I've been doing it for five years now, and I am also on The Amazing Race. So, yeah. uh, I'm Adam Weiner, I'm the editor of the record Fuse, which is a music network. We show a lot of music videos and stuff like that, and uh, we just launched a YouTube channel a year ago, one of the partner channels of YouTube. Awesome, and uh, I'm Jason Horton. Uh, I'm a nobody, so that's why I'm moderating. No, but seriously, folks. Uh, hey, uh, Adam, let's start with you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with Fuse uh, on television. Uh, tell us a little more about that, and then um, you, you went from kind of uh, TV and then incorporated YouTube, uh, which is a little bit different. Sometimes people go from YouTube to TV. Let me. How was that transition? Sure. So it was actually, so we became one of the YouTube partner channels a little over a year ago, launched with the Grammys. Uh, our YouTube stuff is a lot of uh, artist interviews and then also sort of news stories, basically. Um, and it was definitely like a transition. We had a bunch of people that were TV people and we bring them into the YouTube world. And so what we saw a lot of, like, especially in the beginning, was we weren't making really online videos, we were just sort of making bad TV that was sort of just smaller. Um, so it's definitely been a learning curve. I think at this point, though, we have a pretty good feel for stuff where I know, we've definitely grown up a lot in the past year, so. Was there like a struggle um, where, you know, there was a, probably a time where it's just like people didn't take uh, YouTubers or, or, or online content seriously. Was there ever like a struggle or, uh, you know, where a bunch of guys in suits were like, brum, 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 you know, I don't, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Was there ever any of that? I will actually give our, our people props, like our execs, like the reason we... Props do means uh, proper respect. I'm getting them props. Proper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because they, they actually were like, well, because we are not a huge cable channel, right? We're a pretty small cable channel. And one of their things that they saw was sort of like, we have a chance to really get our name out there and sort of actually build an audience here by doing this digital stuff, because that's where so many people are. Um, so it was actually, the people at Fuse were fighting, but they were sort of fighting against some of the corporate execs. We're owned by Madison Square Garden. So there was like a little bit of like, a little bit of that. But in our organization, the support has been pretty awesome, actually. That's great, uh, Joey. Let's uh, let's go down to you. No hair, no hair, no hair comments yet, guys. Just hold back on the hair comments. Uh, Joey, I, yeah, I remember you from uh, way back in the day, the winter, spring, pro days. Yes. Uh, uh, so, you, um, your own YouTube channel is, is a huge focus, uh, as well as uh, now the Amazing Race. Um, I guess you guys can kind of share in, in this. Um, was the Amazing Race, did they find you? Were they like, well, we want some young, hot YouTubers to kind of shake things up in the amazing, the 56th season of the Amazing Race? Or did you apply and kind of leverage your, your YouTube uh, for that? Um, yeah, I mean, they contacted us to like, like audition pretty much. And we had to go through the whole process just like anyone else, but we were approached. But we had to do everything everyone else had to do as well. Were they, uh, I mean, this is something, were they, were they like, listen, you know, we really want you to use your YouTube to kind of promote yourself in the Amazing Race, or was it a lot of just like, hey, listen, we just think no. you're super engaging, cool, and... Uh, no, they really liked our personalities, yeah. and that's like what first interested them about us, and it was just kind of like a bonus that we had, like a following that could like help them out as well. I don't think they under, I don't think they understood that. Yeah. Like, once the first season, or the first episode aired, 
and we did our recap videos, they started seeing like the pull that we had from that, and then kind of giving us more of a way to do recaps and get explicit pictures and stuff like that. But they were never expecting it. We wanted to do it. Yeah. That's great because I mean, you know, they could be like, oh, let's 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 be bloodsuckers and kind of like see what we can get out of these people, but um, it, it's great to be like, hey, listen, we just think you're great, and then it's like, oh, well, this is a bonus. Uh, you guys have a really popular online presence. Um, did you would, would you did you guys ever think that like, oh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna do I'm gonna do television like that's a, a leap for me? Or are you like, I'm just happy with YouTube and like. Uh, I mean, I've always wanted to do TV and stuff, but I never really imagined myself doing reality. Reality so. TV. <laughs> I, mean, I imagine like, you know, maybe like a TV show or a movie, but not like running around in like a pretty suit. <laughs> but that's good too, I like it. That's yeah. cool. Uh, I definitely think that it, re this reality show would probably be the only mm -hmm. reality show that I would do, just because it's like, you're traveling the world reality. and it's like really cool. Is there well, anything you never would do before? I mean, as far as reality TV, I would say it's in the upper echelons of, of reality. Then Bad Girls Club is directly under that. <laughs> right? Right, Bad Girls Club? No. What are you watching? What are you watching? My girlfriend watches <laughs> Bad Girls Club, so therefore I watch it. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, uh, Michael, you, I mean, you're a, a, you know, you're a, a director, uh, kind of first and foremost, and uh, so was like making a movie, was it something like, because you have a kind of a film background, so was making movies like, I want to make movies, oh, YouTube, I'll do that. No, not exactly. I mean, I always, I love Saturday Night Live, and so when YouTube came up, it was like, you got, you can make your own sketches, you can put up whatever you want, you don't have a censorship board, you know, you know there's no rules. So I thought, I tried to take that opportunity of like doing short films and music videos and say, okay, well, I'll just do it and try and put it online see if no one likes it. Um, and then, but in the back of my mind, I've always wanted to make a movie. It's just such a, you know, it's so expensive and it's such a long process and you really want to have a, a great script and crew. So it's just, I wasn't ready when I started. I'm only 24. So when I started YouTube, I was, I don't know, 19, 20. And so uh, it's been, it was, it was a while before we had a good script and before I felt like, you know, we could really make something. Um, you know, I, I was a, sort of a part of the, the process of smiling. Jason Horton's in smiling. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, and he's not wearing some of his clothes. Yeah. Ladies. It's my socks. Um, <laughs> we, we, did you ever think, like, because, you know, the movie was in the AMC theaters, which is, which is pretty, you know, legitimizes it to, to a lot of people that may not know the process. Did you, when you were making it, did you think, oh, this is going to end up in the movie theaters that anyone can go see? Or were you like, oh, I just hope this will be on Redbox or Netflix or something? I mean, when we made it, we thought, you know, at the very, you know, least, we could just put it up online and, you know, maybe have five bucks or something and just throw it out there and see if people want to check it out. Um, but we had such a crazy response from the entertainment industry that when AMC saw it, they said, oh, you know, we can put this in 28 theaters across the country and we can, you know, kind of help support it that way. So it was, it just kind of, you know, became a different thing once we actually made it. And, you know, you just, uh, having, you know, your... YouTube friends and you know talented people in YouTube in the movie kind of helps uh, helps promote the project kind of uh, in a sincere, genuine way. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Shane Dawson's in it, Toby Turner's in it, Dave Storm, the whole totally sketch gang, you know, like Stephen and comedy, uh, and so on. And uh, it, and we tried to do that and combine it with traditional actors, so it was this kind of cool mix of people you might know on YouTube and then people you may have seen on TV or films. Um, <laughs> Not Will Smith or Tom Hanks, but you know. <laughs> That's everyone's answer to big time. <laughs> Familiar faces. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really helped because the trailer got, uh, right now, has like 25 million views, which is crazy. And so right right away, it got a ton of views. And so all these you know, people in the entertainment industry are like, what's this movie? What's going on? So we took all these meetings and showed it around. So it was really interesting to see the kind of, I don't know, where we were coming from, which was just YouTube and then taking it and trying to make it more legitimate. Adam, uh, so, you know, you know, Fuse has your television show, what are you doing differently on YouTube? Like, what are you offering, like, the process, like, what do you say, like, well, on YouTube, let's do something a little bit different, or uh, is it directly tying into the TV show? Just to give people an idea of how that, that process works. It sort of works, we'll, we'll do a little, we'll do a lot of different stuff, basically, so a lot of the interviews we do will end up in a lot of different places, part of it will end up on YouTube. We've got our hosts, who are the TV hosts, who end up being our YouTube hosts also, so when they're talking about you know, whatever happened today in the world of music, it's people you see on TV also talking, but what they're saying on YouTube is not what they're saying on TV, it's, you know, totally unique. Um, and then we'll also test show concepts sometimes. So we've got, uh, 
we had a thing with the Insane Clown Posse where they would watch music videos and kind of like make fun of them as, as they were watching. Uh, and that will probably come a TV show sort of a way for us to test. Some juggalos. Some time. juggalos. Yeah, some juggalos. Right. Right. We all know about Yeah, so it's, it's sort of, we're, we're using it in sort of a bunch of different ways to try to figure out what, you know, what's going to be most effective. It's almost in the same way as if, if uh, you know, somebody was uh, a comedian or performer did something live on stage, kind of tested out their jokes, and says like, oh, let me see if this translates to video. You're kind of doing a, some, some, a little bit similar from YouTube to, to TV. Yeah, totally. But I think that there's, like, there's sort of some separate things, because you can do that, but we also sort of want to be really careful that what we're doing isn't just taking TV and just tossing online to see if it sticks. Um, so definitely when we're talking about our posts doing, like, the news pieces, that that is, you know, a much more YouTube-friendly sort of thing. You know, it's, you're seeing the host, they're talking right to you, they're talking about what's going on. Um, so it's, it, you sort of get a couple, we were kind of using it a couple different ways. Great. Uh, amazing Race Duo. Since we're we're going to talk a little bit together because that, that's it's pretty huge. Yeah, uh, uh, Team YouTube. Um, how did your, uh, you know, because people know you and love you on YouTube, and they, you know, they feel really connected, like, uh, you know, um, and then when you do like a television show, how how, are, how did your fans and your audience react to that? Uh, you doing the Amazing Race? Um, I think everyone was really excited and a little bit shocked because like, actually a lot of people did know that we were on it, but we weren't allowed to tell anyone, so. Yeah, we until we filmed in November and we weren't allowed to tell people until um, January, right? Yeah. And that was crazy, but there was like suspicion and pictures all over Tumblr and the internet, so it was cool and we finally get to say like, yeah, we actually did. Yeah, and we like pre-recorded a bunch of videos like for the month that we were gone, and I had Kat take over my Twitter and stuff, so it was like we were still there, but we weren't. Yeah, the response has been really amazing though. Like everyone is behind us, and for the most part, it felt like America really didn't like us when we first like. Well, I still think that they don't yeah. really. But... No, no, we, we redeemed ourselves with this last episode. Seriously, when okay. they when they U-turn <coughs> us, they U-turn seven hundred thousand other people on the internet. That's so. Terrible. Oh, we're glad they're being nicer to us now. But we're like the fun, loving, like, we're not complaining. We love doing all the challenges, and I think we're super positive, so people are kind of just like, eh, they're annoying. But um, our fans got our back, so it's okay. That's right. That's all That's we all that matters. Yeah. Were you ever worried, like, not honestly worried, but were you ever like, I, you know, I hope this doesn't mis mis misrepresent us or, or in any way or kind of alienate anybody? Oh, yeah. God. Uh, we were like scared every single episode, but I think so far they've been really good. I think they're going to follow that story of us and not show the bad parts of uh, what happened. <laughs> it's a little so, bit of drama. I mean, you're hungry, you're not sleeping, you're not eating, like there's all this stuff that's happening. You're with the same person like 24 7, so. Yeah. I mean, like. We, you're traveling the world, you're living your dream. But you know what? Well, at least when you know other people, other people vlog, and it's like I'm in Orlando, and playlist live. You're like I'm in South Africa. I know. I wish we could vlog, but oh, you weren't like. I, know. I felt like grabbing the camera sometimes. Just being like, hey guys. <laughs> Uh, Michael, like, you know, uh, Smiling was a, a rousing success. Um, can, we, can we interrupt real quick yeah. and let everyone know that Jason Hort was on Mansers? Uh, Spike TV, oh yeah. Jason Hort has been on Mansers. And Top Point Out. And Top Point Out. So whatever. So whatever. He's had uh, lots of tie-ins now. Whatever. whatever. We're, not, we're not here to talk about me. Subscribe, please. Oh God, please subscribe. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, Smiling was really successful. You know, had a lot of uh, media coverage. Um, did they open it more doors where it's like, we want more movies from you? Or was it like, ah, go back to YouTube? No, I, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty incredible. Um, from Smiley, I've, you know, I got a you know, traditional agent, manager, um, you know, in LA, and so I go out and meet with different production companies and you know, producers and studios about different projects that are looking for directors, or, and then also projects that I've been writing, you know, uh, they're being taken seriously now. So it's, I mean, it's amazing. So it's a huge step forward, but I don't want to stop doing YouTube in any way. So I'm trying to maintain that, keep that going, but also try and explore and um, you know see if there's other films that can be made. Well, it's, like it's you know always going to be a very very powerful um, uh, thing in your arsenal to have a you know an audience and, and, and a YouTube channel uh, to kind of I hate to use the word leverage, but you know it's it's leverage one thing against another. I want you guys to go down the line and kind of give. Um, some general uh, advice to people that kind of like they're on YouTube. They want to they want to make a, a jump to some other mediums, or if they're in a, in a bigger medium, how to kind of incorporate YouTube uh, in, a, in a kind of uh, positive, um, workable manner. Let's we'll start with the at the end. Of um, I would say YouTube to TV. Uh, people on TV are watching. Like I mean, you guys know you ended up on TV. I've seen all of you. Uh, you know, we go like when we're casting stuff, we are absolutely looking at stuff online. 
Um, so that's you know that's that's sort of something that's, that's sort of going across the board. I've been in a couple different places where that's happening. Um, what was the other question the other way into, into YouTube? I think people that are more established looking to do stuff online just need to understand that it's different, that you're not doing TV, that you're not doing sort of what you're doing other places, that you need to sort of learn the rules of, of what works online. Um, I have a question for you guys. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, I really don't know how to answer this because it kind of just like stumbled upon us. Are you new to TV? Yeah. Has it opened any, like, has, you know, from that show where people like, some guys kind of like, hey, you, you know you're the money, right, or something like that. Some you know Hollywood person, like, like kind of being like, oh, you're on TV. Has it opened up any doors or anything like that? I mean, not really. But I think a lot of casting directors are looking at YouTubers these days and like, see like how much of an audience they can pull to their show, and I think it's really valuable. I think you know, along with Kev Jumba, who was the first YouTuber on Amazing Race, we kind of. Um, brought it back. I think uh, Amazing Race wasn't really looking at YouTubers before, and now it, since Joey and I have been on it, and there's been such a huge uh, change in like everything, people are totally like the, what is our demographic? 13 to 18 year olds are now watching the Amazing Race, where it's just the parents normally would. So now they're definitely looking at YouTubers to be on the race, because they see the benefits of it. So, I don't really know how to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the biggest, the I don't know about the biggest piece of advice, other than all the corny stuff that you probably heard a million times or hear, which is like, do what you love, practice, you know, put it out there, put yourself out there, um, try and make things that you think other people will like. You know, those are all kind of the things I, I try to do. Um, but uh, you have to like it yourself first. But the big thing recently that with the tie-in um, angle is, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but Billboard started including <coughs> like YouTube streams into the top 100. So the Harlem Shake is now like the top of the billboard charts. And that's a new thing. So I, I couldn't imagine how that's gonna change, you know, from people having a hit song on YouTube and how they would be on the top of the billboard charts. And that would change their lives. And then the same thing goes with the Nielsen ratings. They're starting to include like how many people are, you know, tweeting about a show on TV or watching it or talking about it off, you know, off the air but online. So I think there's a real chance for people on YouTube who are making cool things to influence TV and film in a bigger way than ever before. So keep on doing what everyone's doing and you know just try and have fun. That was a good answer. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Michael Gallagher. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions that are directly kind of related to this panel. Uh, so we only have a few minutes. Does anyone have any questions that are directly related? Is it, no. I can jump in with one. Okay, go. I, for you guys, you were saying that like they started giving you more leeway to recap and stuff like that after they saw the like impact you were having. Did they not realize there was going to be any impact? And, and what did they see and how did they change? I think TV just doesn't understand YouTube. I think that's what it is. There's just this like barrier there with the, where they're like, yeah, they're getting views, but I don't get how. And I think we proved ourselves. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So they literally saw a numbers jump. They're like, oh, all of a sudden we're getting these, you know. They had to go because they yeah. were like, they were like, oh, here, take this, take that. And they're like, okay. <laughs> that's cool. Anyone else? Uh, uh, I see hands that want to go up and go. Yeah, oh, right in the front, we'll start here. Since you guys are on The Amazing Race, have you seen your demographic go up? You said that you guys had brought 13 to 18 year olds to watching The Amazing Race, but have you seen more people come to your channels? Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's I get, months. yeah, I get recognized at Target now. For, <laughs> so I think like older people are like, recognizing me. <laughs> yeah, that's been a big change. The, the cool thing though, about, I got a ton more subscribers and followers, and it was more from the YouTube community being pumped about us being right. on um, The Amazing Race versus like people who watch The Amazing Race following us. So yeah. that's I think their demographic doesn't really know how to use YouTube, so our numbers haven't been really increased by that. But in person, it's different. Yeah, so like grandmas and stuff recognize yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, is has Fuse considered looking at YouTube musicians to feature them in a music video on their channel? Yeah, uh, we, we are. Um, not in a music, because the music videos that we play are sort of, um, they're artist videos, so like we don't, we don't actually create any music videos, but we're definitely sort of looking and seeing like, all right, is there things happening online that we should start airing some of those videos on our network? Okay. Anyone else? Anyone? Bueller, because I'm not reference. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I want to give all our guests uh, a, a big hand. Uh, uh, we're all camera-related questions uh, outside, because there's another, another panel starting. Thanks, everybody.
Woo! <laughs>